Well, let's just, uh, let's fix something real fast. Here we go. Uh, lasso. Auto lasso. We'll keep that. Enemies can lasso. That's time to go. <laughs> I'm not dealing with it anymore. No more will my archers or my riflemen get attacked. I only have one rifleman, but either way, no more will we lasso our people out of our parapets. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to today's episode of The Profaned. I've kind of gone a little off the deep end today. We have a bunch of research we're going to get done. We have a bunch more base building we have to get done. And we have some family planning to get done. Why? Because Lilia and Mackenzie decided to have a kid. So, because our medieval heroes are now dealing with kids, we need them to be a little bit more happy. We also need to make sure that their houses are a little bit more secure, and we also need to make sure that they're wearing the right armor for their role. So, we have lightened the load on our archers. I have a profane archer that should help them be a little bit more maneuverable and respond to situations across the, uh, the tomb faster. Also, we are focusing on moving our village over to the coastline so that way we can focus our village on this kind of um, coastal raider kind of look not really raider but we want them to move over that way and the curse of the hole ending up in walls and i have no idea how that got there how did we get another hole in the wall i'm getting sick of this every single day every single episode since the holes episode has been a hole somewhere in the goddamn walls <laughs> So, we are going to shorten up our, uh, our base. We're going to shrink it down. We're going to start making everything compact and be an interior setup. And I'm going to make our uh, barn section a little bit smaller. So, our field for them is not going to be as big. They won't have as much room to roam, unfortunately, for the animals. However, it will allow us to secure them inside. And where's my bull? So, our bull's missing. It's all just female cows. Seriously, what happened to him? I had... These are all his kids. So where is he? Could we have lost him to, like, disease? Or did he get killed in a raid? Someone might have killed him in a raid. Shit. We do have Muffalo, though. If we take Muffalo, we could have Muffalo furred undead. And that feels pretty good like a good upgrade choice i think we're gonna upgrade angus beef to muffalo and i'm okay with that all right let's get the pen fixed up and i'm still upset i lost my bull i don't know where the bull went but that's that's upsetting um okay haunty we're gonna have to move you over as well and i want this to be a, a smarter stable i want things to just kind of work a little bit better so the plan going forward for today is going to be to move all of our village up over to the coastline and into this little bay here, too deep infestation, God damn it. Okay, as we get Mackenzie over there, he's the only one healthy enough, he should be able to handle it by himself. It's just a couple bugs. Um, right, so we are researching terrain rehabilitation, so that way we can put soil all along the beach side, so that way, mentally, I can say all of our houses are nice and secure and we don't have to worry about the beach sand sinking underneath the house construction. That's perfectly fine. We do have a Divine Order Greatsword. Maybe we equip that to Mackenzie. as like an insult to the Divine Order. He's wielding a Divine Order Greatsword as a vampire. Ooh, that might be a good insult. Um, shit, Mackenzie, you're actually not doing good, and you need a death rest. Um, <laughs> shit. Uh, Haas, get down there. You've got, you've got that good military pick. That should do us some good. I do need to start getting... Can, can, never mind. We can't coagulate ourselves. Mackenzie is down. Did he kill any of them? Uh, he killed one scarab. Uh, 
in one of the Celio Poods, I think. Celio po I can never figure out the name of it. Haas is doing fairly well, actually. That military. Oh, there we go. Two Mega Spiders dead thanks to Haas. Well done, my man. Left middle finger destroyed. That's all right. Oh, wait, that's Mackenzie. Um, Skull, get in there. Your skull's taking over the front line. There we go. Okay. Haas almost went down. There we go. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's not pull the Mega Spider over, please. Oh, so Mackenzie, you just killed a Scarab and that's it. We need to upgrade Mackenzie. How we upgrade Mackenzie, I don't know, but Mackenzie, you can't be that useless. Go take a nap. We're going to start your death rest, and then we will stabilize you. Prioritize tending to Mackenzie. Thank you, Fariz. Okay. That's taken care of. The secret of Reed. I'm getting distracted. A six-year-old named Reed is calling from nearby. She's begging to join you. She's a Goliath child. I will accept Reed. We took Lilia in, and she's become a fantastic member of this colony. We are going to also take Reed in, and we may enlarge the mine area. Reed, Poppy, you've stolen a hat off of a corpse. Well done. Aggressive, robust, metabolism plus two, light gray skin, unstoppable. Destiny marks, thick skin, body scale, massive. She has the capabilities to become a fantastic character, but she's also a scholar. <laughs> a Goliath scholar. That is cool. I like that. That's the kind of thing I like to see in, in my players when I'm playing or running D&D, &D, is players who are like thinking outside the box and are not going to make just that standard punch stuff character, and they really think about that. Now let's get into the next portion of the build base. Right now, my goal is to shorten our walls, make it easier for our people to traverse from one section of our tomb to the next section, and have ease of access to all of these sections, while also staying pretty clear away from any dangerous points. So if we build this outside wall here and shrink everything in, that includes our fields, that includes our, our living spaces, we bring it all in and we open the main doors to the tomb always that then leads to the second room which is our treasure trove the hope is that we can get people to just come in take the the riches and wealth and then fuck off i don't want people being here raiding us and the only ones who are my biggest worry is the divine order so if we can center the tomb entryway and then what is the recreation room to become our treasure room and then lay in some embrasures we'll have a central kill zone area where the enemy can come in and fight us or die uh, or, or just take the treasure and fuck off so if they try to break in further we will kill them um, but other than that I think I think it's okay so I think if we start working towards that, we build stronger walls, stronger doors, and we get everything there. For Linda, working on making sure we have enough slate to take care of this build. And then we start transitioning all of our people's houses over to the eastern edge of our tomb. And we turn the village over here into the east. And we make it look nice. We make large houses for everybody we make them super comfortable and then we just kind of fall in line with the way that the walls will sit up against the coastline i am going to try and keep a healthy animal population here so that way we can grow plenty of hay grass and then harvest plenty of hay grass and make sure that all of our animals are well taken care of and well fed as we close in but that outer wall that we've done is going to be where the edge of the wall is and we'll kind of thicken things up so it's maybe like a one to two person uh, column. So it has to be one on one fights or two on two fights. We're going to take the bandit ruin, absolutely, because we do need to do questing as that is the only way to make our people happy. Now, I don't expect to finish any of this construction today. However, we can start putting in the redundant doorways for us to be able to get into this uh, behind these walls of the second chamber, we'll move our dining room around, we'll find a new place for it, and we'll start making things look a lot neater. We'll start moving all of our 
recreational furniture over into the sitting areas so that way we've got kind of like a more controlled location for everything um and then we'll start figuring out where other things are gonna go let's see we'll get the whole table we'll get the chairs set up we'll start building some extra slate chairs just to give them a nice little area and a man hunting pack of wargs is chasing that's a lot of wargs that's a lot of profane bones, actually. That's what that is. We now have a hunt on our hands. And I think we're gonna just send Skull out. He's at 90% HP. He's good. There we go. There's one down. Let's... If we start killing all these wargs, it's gonna give us a bunch of profane bones that we can use to make a bunch of profane weapons that create the rot stink to help demoralize and cause issues against hostile forces so i think we will focus on getting as much of that in as possible killing as many of these wargs as possible and it really shouldn't be that big of an issue for skull he is a tank among all of our enemies and he's proved himself to be that's still so many though <laughs> He's proving himself to be incredibly skilled as a combatant. So I am I'm quite pleased with his capabilities so far. We'll send him in here. Let's take out this one. We're getting a good amount. I don't even care if they all rot. The point is, is collecting all of these in one go. Let's go. Take him out. Take... There we go. Well done, Skull. So as long as we don't get overwhelmed, we should be pretty good. And I'd say, nice. And we got people coming in and picking up all of the warg corpses. Go get that one. Okay, it's another undead warg. It's only two. It's not a major deal or anything like that. But I'd say we're doing really good. We're getting, oh. Oh. <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Fuck. Skull can still get this. He can still come away at this with a win, a good solid victory. There's no real major worry. I know we're very low on health, but again, we're profane. We don't bleed out. The worst we have is like maybe one of them bites a leg off and runs away with it. There's only two left. He has done an amazing... Oh God, we're at 16% health. <laughs> 11 bodies. We soloed 11 fucking bodies. Well done, my friend. <laughs> With the pier being constructed and our terrain being transitioned all over the soil, let's see what we can get out of this skull. We have our linworm scales. That is ours. We're not getting rid of that. That's a permanent fixture for us. Uh, freezing spray. Ray, don't need. Let's sell the car exhaust to a combat supplier. We don't need it. Um, let's get rid of all of this weaponry that we don't need anymore. I want to start making our own stuff. I want to start making sure that everything we have is all profane build or um, something more unique along that run. We'll keep some of the Divine Order stuff. I kind of want to have these trophies of these assholes that attack us and have killed our people. What I really want to do is I want to turn the pro the divine ordered like commander, the leader of the divine order. I want to turn them into a profane, and I just want to sit them in a room where like all we do is feed them. They only get food, but they're just in a room. They're just a trophy. That's it. I just want a profane trophy at this point from one of the divine order, and just to keep them there forever. We're gonna get Lilia a shield belt, but it's a shield talisman. But either way. It's gonna look good for her. And as long as we can keep her safe, the better. Now, we have built one of our village houses. We are going to have to get the other seven built over. We are making them larger. We're making them out of slate. We are making them with fine wood floors. We're upgrading everything about the houses. We are filling them with stuff. We're gonna make them look more beautiful. We're gonna transition all of the incense burners over and everyone is going to have a home that sits just right. But I'm also going to utilize this as a way to kind of shift 
how our fortifications look. We're going to continue with the sandstone walls for now until um, we decide whether or not we're going to shift over to granite. Granite would be the better choice, but we don't have granite naturally here in the area. And I'm going to build Mackenzie a vampire hut. If any of you know who Arthur Greenleaf Holmes is, you'll understand that reference. Um, <laughs> Uh, he's a fantastic uh, Renaissance Fair poet. Raid Psycaster Initio Tribe. You know what? Let's go. Bring it. We could use a good scrap. Let's go ahead and open the front gate. This is part of the reason, right? They all separate out. I want these people to start coming in, and I want us to have more of these contained brawls going on where all of our people are able to like fire into an area and then melee goes in and starts busting heads and i i want to see these brawls go down and already there's the first one there goes mr brown he's down uh macaw uh there's one of their side cast oh shit please uh, gee, stop stop mackenzie vulture please mackenzie do work vulture just got his first kill uh, there's, uh, Fariz is down. Okay, Mackenzie, there we go. Decapitation. First guy that walks up to you, you kill. But otherwise, you're just standing there like life is good. Arcady, Haas, uh, Haas, okay. F no, Fariz just went down now. I thought Fariz was already down. Holy shit. Um, uh, Mackenzie, uh, shit, I'm, uh, Haas, rescue Fariz. Arcady and Skull, where are you? I don't know. Mackenzie, take out that damn blue person. I don't know what they are. Skull finally shows up to do work. Um, and Skull comes in with the decapitation. Thank you, Skull, for doing work your son can't do. Proving that you need to send the father to do the son's work. <laughs> that feels a little too real, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's go out and start uh, eliminating a bit more of these people. Arcady... Oh, someone just froze us. Who just froze us? Was it that dude? Pocket sand into his eyes. Yeah, no more freezing people. Dead. Vulture getting a decapitation on that. Nice. The one thing that's bumming me out is that despite the fact we're wearing armor and this should be a shit kicker fight, we are still taking massive, unnecessary damage by these people. And... I feel like it's just that RimWorld does not respect its own armor system. And I know it doesn't. I know someone's going to say, well, use Combat Extended. I'm not a fan <laughs> of Combat Extended. I understand there are... Oh, I can't capture you. Brown, you were going to be so good. Let's just... Skull, thank you. Stop breaking my heart. I'm not a fan of Combat Extended. I understand that there are people who really, really enjoy it. I am not a fan. Should I do a series that uses Combat Extended? Probably. Will I? I don't know. I'd have to come up with a theme for it for me to really nail it down and want to actually stick to it. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe. Someone convince me. But in reality, we're just simple undead trying to grow enough hay grass before the season changes. While optimistic about the next few weeks, she has shown little personal growth. Reed has strange fear that by daydreaming about psychology, she will end up getting kidnapped by machine gods. Luckily, the machine gods aren't here, so I will give you kind. I'm not going to do incompetent right now. If it comes up again, maybe. Especially if you show no personal growth. But right now, you've just joined us. I would say you have had some pretty good experiences so far. Nothing too crazy has gotten out of hand. The next thing we have to do, because I want us to have a good experience with making sure that our entire kill zone makes the most sense, but this is also doubling as our treasure room, so we don't really need to be wasting extra wood on heat stones. So let's go ahead and get two, four tables right now. We'll get the four tables put in. We'll have the big ones, we'll have the small ones, and as we start getting more and more treasure, we will eventually start putting more and more tables in here to display all the treasure to draw in all the scumbags and bastards that would try and steal from us. But I also like the idea of taking a, a little 
hint and nods from great D&D stories like my favorite is Tucker's Kobolds and really kind of turning the profane, at least of our faction of profane, into these clever, uh, you know, area securing individuals. Now, we do have this bizarre iron formation and we know what comes out of it the moment we finish clearing it. Pilar, get out of there. And Arcady and Skull, please bring down the iron golem. This is at least going to give us a nice charge of iron or we will have the 562, which is fantastic because we do need to start desperately making more iron ingots so we can start making some steel ingots so we can start making better armor. Once everything falls into place, I will feel better about much of our situations. Gathering to celebrate Mackenzie and Lilia's marriage, I am so happy it is finally here. Getting to this point that I never thought we would, where we'd have two of our humans getting married and starting an actual life. Not being profane, not being lost to the curse, but these are our actual humans. This is where the humanity ends up shining. However, should we come under attack immediately after the wedding and lose one of our happy married couples, like we lost Flip, I think that could definitely change the course of action. As long as that doesn't happen, I can see us going in the right direction. That is being we are going to make allies with those who are not outwardly hostile to us. I do have one idea before we get going is to make a Mithril Scourge Knight Greatsword as a wedding gift from the profane to Mackenzie. And I think this is where we start having Mackenzie be the go-between for our profane and the outside world for us to make these allies. So I'm gonna have Haas work on his greatest crowning achievement right now. An inspired creativity. Haas, you're amazing. <laughs> I need Haas to focus on this. Oh my god, you got this midway through, Haas. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get a Masterwork Scourge Knight Greatsword as a wedding present to Mackenzie. A Galtus Coalition relationship. Okay. So, we need to keep Mackenzie and Lilia alive. This is where this, the profaned focusing on, we have this opportunity to hold on to ourselves. We will hold on to our humanity. We will be the warriors and we will defend the living within our charge. We already destroyed somebody's stomach. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I've also noticed that since I've installed Medieval Overhaul, RimWorld has had this nagging sense of superiority in attempting to try and recreate the Red Wedding where every time someone has a moment of happiness, they're like, how can we come in? Ooh, wait a minute. Buffy, legendary warrior. <gasps> Buffy Saunders, the vampire slayer, legendary warrior. <laughs> Eat shit, Buffy. And yes, I know it's Buffy Summers, but still, I know I'm old, okay? I'm old. <laughs> but if you're gonna give me a character named Buffy, and they're gonna be a legendary warrior, you're goddamn right I'm gonna call him Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and now that's just the way it is. Lee Clooney Cloon. Well, you're gonna die. I love that there are so many people of their raiding party that's gonna bleed out just because they allowed me to shoot them, and there's another goddamn hole in the parapets because the door is busted. It's always a hole. There is always a hole to haunt me. Somehow, some way, there is always a fucking hole. <laughs> Look at these assholes trying to bust open holes. Agiri and Herlinda doing awesome work. I love that the profane don't sleep. It makes defending the colony so much easier. It's probably, we are getting close. <laughs> you're coming back after getting shot in the head. Yep. <laughs> that proves you're getting some brain damage. Skull, come on down. I need you to defend in case a hole opens up because my life is holes. How are we doing up here? Ooh, we've routed half of them and they put a hole in the wall. Great. Skull, go out the hole and open holes in people's heads, please. Perfect, I love it. He's gonna die a uh, jumper or is it Juniper? Juniper. My screen is incredibly small and I am not that close to it at the moment. All right, there's the kill, there's the decapitation. Boom! Juniper, you were connected. Now you're not. 
Congratulations. <laughs> I, ooh, Amisha Rose Thorn. Good shooting, armorer, too smart, a lot of good proficiencies, good medical. I think we're going to take you. You're going to bleed out in 0.7 hours. You know what? Instead of trying to save you, you've got an infection. Let's let you die. Just skull, just def <laughs> skull defending himself. All right, I'll just cut your faces off. That's fine. Just let me smash your skulls in. Exactly what I'm supposed to do. Fariz, get up there, defend. Let's let Rose die. Then we will send Lilia down. And as long as it's not like a full day, right? She shouldn't have any brain damage coming back to life. She should come back as hostile. But we can't at least... Uh, you're useless. I'm not going to take a brawler kitchen hand. Um, Fariz with the decapitation. Jesus, girl. Good work. But as long as we bring Rose back within the day, she should be fine. There shouldn't be any brain damage that we can't heal. Because I don't think we can get a heal done in the medieval era to fix any kind of brain damage that might happen. So Mackenzie, Lilia... Let's bring you two down. Skull getting the last person who is trying to run away and break through the gate. You're dead. Everybody gets their head cut off today. Let's have uh, Mackenzie and Lilia take care of this resurrection. Husband and wife spending time together. Husband to carry the wife back. Rose is back alive. And resurrection sickness two days. So we've got time. Go ahead and capture... No, you know what? Rescue your wife. We will let somebody else capture Rose and collect your wife's crossbow. Now, the next thing we got to do is close off the main doors. We're going to replace that with just wall. Then we are going to add, where is the profane double door? There we are. Dead center middle of the tomb, we are going to add the profane double door. Arcady getting to work immediately. What a great lad. And as you guys can see, right off to the right, everyone can come in and out of the tomb without any issues. Everything is falling in place exactly as it needs to. Haas is done. There it is. Mithril Scourge Knight Greatsword. Masterwork! Yes! Oh, 18.9 damage, 22% armor penetration. Not that great, but it is a fantastic weapon. Look at that. 13 damage on the hilt poke, 44 damage on the cut with a rot cut edge. That's fantastic. An engraving on this weapon portrays a farmstead. A gunsmith to the right of the main scene conveys the feeling of emptiness. Equip the mithril. Scourge Knight Greatsword Mackenzie. Don't go anywhere. Get back here. I want to see you. Oh, yes. Yes. We'll drop that shield. You can't use the shield anymore. Oh, Mackenzie, my friend. You look so cool. We are going to need to get you different armor, though. For you to use this, you are going to need to lighten the load a little bit uh oh we are in labor okay lilia uh fariz mackenzie 76 percent quality well that sounds about right for the medieval era so let's gather for birth lilia fariz mackenzie um you know what let's have skull be there let's have dad be there as well that's not a weird thing to just have your undead father-in-law watching over you meanwhile you have an undead woman who is your father's who is your father-in-law's friend catching the baby <laughs> there's so much with this where it's like it's disturbing but it's perfect fantasy why is the baby not showing up gav newborn uh where where's the baby gavril gav mckenzie Let's go with it. I'll keep the name. Why do you have a shooting eight and a melee at 16? That's a little much for a young kid. Oh, shit. He's got the hero trait. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What do we do then? What do we do? The kid has the hero trait. Um, What does that mean for us? If he has the hero trait, he's a sanguifage hero. He's going to be a vampire hero. Could be like Raziel, but that means that he's going to end up like, you know... 
a profane vampire, but that's not possible because the profane genes overtake the prof the sanguifage genes and vice versa, so we can't do that. What could we do with Gav, the vampire-born hero, future hero? What, maybe, maybe this is the right path. Maybe this is the humanity speaking through. We build this way to defend our people. We get a little cheesy with it, and we just admit that we aren't gonna be focusing on the honor-bound focus of the profane. We're not going to be doing this fairly. We are building a place where the profane and sanguifages and people who have darker tendencies or feel a certain way from the rest of the world, this is where they can come and feel safe. They can be safe here. This dark, uh, gloomy tomb that is safe for all who wish to be a part of this. Let's go ahead and put these tiles here. Um, build copies. Nope. Uh, get rid of that. There we go. There's the tile. Slate tile right there, right there, right there. So as we start building up this tomb, now we have a focus. Now we are keeping our humanity. We have this young boy who has the potential to be a hero. If he dies, I see us going completely, completely dark if the boy dies. But as long as the boy stays alive, we build up our fortress. We start making sure that every ounce of our security is up to a T to keeping everybody safe within here. We have the makings of a fantastic end to our story. Our prisoners are starting to get recruited. I don't know how many of them we're going to keep human, how many we're going to keep, how many we're going to turn into a sanguifage, how many we're going to keep, uh, uh, turn into profaned. But I, I do know this. Vladimir is going to be a sanguifage. Whether that is a good idea or a bad idea, I have yet to decide. But, ooh, we finished gunpowder. Now we can start making riflemen. Yes, profane, undead riflemen. I like that idea very, very much. It might be a little broken, but I do think it's a smart idea. Finally having the time to start closing off the unnecessary portions of our territory is proving to be a fantastic breath of fresh air. Let's get the bridges built over. We don't need massive construction. We just need to close off enough of the water to where I feel secure. Then we can tear down this wall down here. Ooh, a troll. Hello, troll. Ancient troll. Nice. Uh, not a pack animal. That's a shame. <laughs> Ooh, a lot of troll meat out of you. That's pretty good. These are definitely some good creatures we could snag up and deuce <laughs> the dead rhino. And we had a logging party come through. I just let them be and we'll just grab whatever wood they didn't take. We can start pulling over all of our walls now and closing in everything. Ooh, more Angus. They have a bull. They have a bull. Can you sell me one? Yes, you can. Perfect. Um, okay, we're gonna take the bull. We will sell them the hides and the furs that we don't need. We're gonna keep the heavy fur. We're gonna keep the human leather. I'll take your wood planks as just extra fuel and resources for myself. Uh, you, relations uh, Empire Raider. We do need to build our trust. Let's go ahead and take the bandit camp up. Quest available, bandit lair. Oh, it's for House Oswain. I don't want to do anything to help us, Swain. And it's the sickness goons. Both are our enemies. I don't... Do we accept this? I don't know if I want to accept this. I have five days, roughly, to decide if I'm going to accept it. So far, everything is... No way! Yes! They're here. The queen has come. And the queen of the profane is not skimping on her people's armament. She is not. They are not well armored, not like us. We can handle this. But the profane great bows, the bronze headhunter pauldrons, these are all things I want to snag off of their bodies. Hopefully we don't kill them all. Hopefully we can down some. It's not going to happen easily, that's for sure. 
Downing the Profane is going to be tough. They're coming at us from three separate angles. We have tons of people outside already. I think we just send Skull out to greet them with a good old fashioned. Oh, it's been a long time since I've seen you. Bark Dark Kidder. <laughs> what a good name. I like that. What's your name? I'm Bark Dark Kidder. Oh, if only I had left traps there, we would have taken them out. Shit. <laughs> If only. You know what? That might actually be a smart move to do is once we've uh, pulled the base in is just during, just leave certain traps around the map just to kind of see if any of the pathing of NPCs falls them into things. I like this. This is the first profane raid. We are three years into our game and the profane have finally come to attack our queen. Our former queen is here. Uh, let's go ahead. There you go, Skull. First one, decapitating. Oh, yes. Skull is not going back. Skull is not happy. I would imagine that Skull, being uh, the adventurer talent, veteran of the profaned conflicts, whatever it is that makes him such a good warrior, he is not looking to come back. He is looking to fight them every step of the way. They have busted through the first gate. That was quick. Mackenzie, get up there. Agiri, get up there. Everybody, search and destroy. Take them down. Let's get this done. Lilia, why don't you get up? Go ahead and drop that, because you can't shoot with that. I just realized that. Shield user has a ranged weapon. Um, Mackenzie's down? No. Crush profane great bow to the brain. Jesus Christ, crack and a bruise from the great bow? Holy shit, his helmet did absolutely nothing. Agiri, get the masterwork greatsword before that starts taking any damage from being outside in the open. Yes, I have my priorities. Um, Arcady, uh, Vulture, Skull, yes. Okay, take out the last of them, Skull. Don't go down. You have to do this. Come on. Everyone else up top is taking care of things, Skull. You've got this. Come on, come on, come on. Lilia is not doing anything. She's just hanging out. Okay, let's get her up. She can start shooting at uh, whatever his name is. Cass, Clark, something. I I, I don't know. Fist, uh, are you worth taking prisoner? You are not. Um, I don't think we'd take anybody prisoner. Cam. Uh, shooting. Oh, wow. If we could get you, Cam, you would actually be worth taking prisoner. Arcadian Vulture have actually killed pretty much everybody by themselves because Mackenzie went down with one arrow. One arrow took Mackenzie down. We need to get Mackenzie a better helmet pronto. And we get an attack for hire, and they're down as well. Way to go, Lilia. Good job. Mackenzie, let's rescue you. Let's get you rescued by Pan. Thank you so much. And we start breaking down all the undead. So, with the profaned here, that means they have built a boat. They have come over to our continent. And Mackenzie got taken out by one arrow. Agiri, getting the first transformation over to profane. We need to have more profane here. Anyone who is good with shooting, I think we're going to start transferring over to profane. We need you on training every single time and as you can see with how good the profane great bows were the fact that we got two of them in good condition we gave them to Lilia and Herlinda and Vladimir is finally within our grasp welcome Vlad it is a pleasure to have you with us at this moment I don't have a weapon for Vladimir not yet I am not going to feed into his shooting. I will give him a flintlock pistol when we unlock it. But I am thinking we are going to make him a profaned great axe and give him a profane great axe because there's no profane spears. But if we can find a really good possessed spear, we will absolutely give him a possessed spear. 
I have loved every minute of today's episode. This has been so insane. We finally got attacked by the profaned. Everything is coming together just the way it should be. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me in today's episodes. I appreciate you all joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Shout out to the patrons. Thank you for supporting the channel on Patreon. You too can support the channel on Patreon. Heading down in the description below, there's a link there. You can support by becoming a channel member. Thank you to my channel member for supporting the channel. And you can always support for free by hitting like, subscribe, the bell notification, comment, and sharing with those you think might like the content, and sharing your own thoughts about what you think is going on. What you think we should do in the future. I think we're in a good position to keep our humanity and to wage a war against the capital of the profaned. We have to kill the queen. My question then becomes, if we kill the queen, what happens to us after? That's a good question, isn't it? We'll come to it when the story comes. Thank you everyone for joining me today. I will see you all in the next episode. Peace.